Absolutely. Whether you're applying from abroad or from inside a high school in Nashville, you're going to use the Common Application or as an alternative, the United College, Universal College Application, pardon me. That's a new platform that we joined two years ago. Um, but most students will apply through the Common App. We no longer print our own application. We simply use the Common App and the, the Universal College application. So the, those are available online. You complete them online. And there is a form that asks you lots of questions about your family and your education and the activities that you've been involved in, and then gives you the opportunity to write about yourself in two essays, one relatively short and one a little bit longer. Um, and those parts are submitted by you, and they can be used for not only Vanderbilt, but any of 450 other colleges in America that belong to the Common Application. So that simplifies the application process for lots and lots of students who are applying to both public and private universities. There are many of each type that belong to the Common Application. So that will provide most of the information that we will receive from you. It also provides you with the opportunity to link teachers and um, administrators in your high school who can write on your behalf. So two teachers will send recommendations for you. You choose them and you provide their email addresses and they are linked to the common application through that so that they can provide the recommendations for you. Um, and likewise, you provide the email context for your school administrator, whether that's a counselor or a principal or a headmaster, to send your high school transcript um, and a statement about you, which sometimes is called the counselor recommendation, sometimes is called the secondary school report. Um, but it's, it is a statement by a school official that is more of an overview about your entire high school secondary experience, um, both in and out of the classroom. So those pieces of documentation and standardized testing, which is to say the SAT or the ACT, one of which is required. We don't care which one you take. Um, but you need to have that, take those tests and have them sent to us. And altogether, that gives us a fairly full portrait of your years during high school, both in and out of school, um, with which we can gauge how competitive you are academically, and then what you will bring to the mix in terms of your, your person, in terms of your um, activities beyond the classroom, in terms of your values and the things that you say about yourself, your perspective, your lens. We value the fact that you have lived overseas. That adds to the interesting conversations on campus. So all of that together is looked at in a process that is termed holistic. That's admissions vocabulary that you will hear slung about by colleges all over the US. We have a holistic admissions process, which means we're going to look beyond your grade point average and your test scores to see what else there is uh, that makes you an interesting candidate. So it's not simply the grades that you've gotten. It's also the level of the courses that you have taken, how challenging a curriculum you've chosen, how well you've done it, how long you've persisted in different courses um, across the years, whether you've taken one year of science or four years of science, whether you've taken uh, one year of a foreign language, or in fact you're conversant in two or three languages. All of it is interesting to us, and we look at how all the pieces come together um, to give us a clear sense of how competitive you are in relation to other students that we're seeing. Um, and, and what it is about you that would make you a special addition to a classroom, but also to a residence hall. Does that help? Can I ask you a little bit more about standardized testing requirements? Um, being, being a highly selective university and, and very competitive for international students, we get a lot of questions about how, how students here can set themselves apart. Um, and one of those ways for students could be taking an SAT subject test as well. Do you recommend a subject test for international students? Because we don't require subject tests of any students, uh, they are an elective addition. So my recommendation, because our philosophy is to look for the reasons to admit students, 
not the reasons to deny them. My recommendation is to take subject tests in subjects in which you have good reason to believe you will do well, see what your scores look like, and then code your colleges, or at least code colleges like Vanderbilt that give you that choice, to receive the scores that help you, to receive the scores that are strong and are going to make you look good, and not to send us the scores that are ho-hum, mediocre, disappointing. We don't need to see those. So if you have taken a great deal of math and you take a practice test and you can see that you're going to do well on it, then yes, send us the math score. If you have taken Russian years beyond the minimum, which is to say more than three years, and you take a practice test and you do well on the practice test, then yes, take the, take the SAT subject test, and if the score is strong, send it to us. But don't feel as though you need to send us scores that don't help you. That's great advice. Thank you, Mary. And I have one last question for you, and it's, um, again, touching on the early, early decision, um, early ways to apply for Vanderbilt. Um, you mentioned that there are two deadlines for early applications. Uh, could you please explain the difference between applying in the first round versus the second round? Yes, that's a little bit confusing, partly because there are not very many colleges that offer Early Decision 1 and 2. Um, early Decision 1 is best for students who have done their research early enough and thoroughly enough to know by November 1st that we are their first choice college. If that is the case, you should apply ED. If your parents have looked at the financial situation and determined that they are comfortable having you do that and making that commitment, knowing that whatever it is they hear for financial aid in, in mid-December is likely to be a pretty good ballpark guess as to what they ultimately will receive. So you apply for early decision admission and your parents fill out an early CSF profile, which is their early financial aid form. And on December 15th, when you hear that you're admitted, you're all set. You know what your money's going to look like? Pretty close. And you, and you know that you're admitted and you know you don't need to apply elsewhere. You should only do that if your parents sign off on it and say, yes, we are comfortable having you make that commitment. Because effectively what you're saying is, I'm done dating colleges. I'm ready to propose marriage. And if you say yes, off we go. We are a thing together for the next four years. So many students don't quite know that yet by November 1st. But, but for some of them, in the process of completing all of their applications during the months of November and December, things crystallize. And by January 1st, when most of the deadlines hit, they do know that, in fact, they have one college about which they feel much more strongly than the others, and it's Vanderbilt. So we have ED2 for kids who come to that realization a little bit later. Sometimes that's because they were not as, as um, ready to make a commitment in November. Sometimes it's because they applied somewhere else early decision and didn't get in. And now we're their first choice, now that they know that their other first choice fell through. So that's fair enough. We, can, we are happy to look at that as well. If you are sure that we are your first choice at ED2, go ahead and apply ED2. I will say candidly that we are a, probably a little bit more generous with the yes letters at ED1 than at ED2 because ED2 is also the date of the regular decision deadline. So by January 1st, we know just how many more applications we will have than we had last year, and we know that, that we're going to be in a little bit of a panic. So we might be a little bit more conservative about saying yes to students who apply ED2 than ED1, but still your chances are probably a little bit stronger than at regular decision. Because you're making right. that commitment, and we are gaining students who really want to be here. That makes a lot more sense. Thank you for explaining that to us. And, and thank you both to, to Mary and Tom for spending time with us today and learning a lot more about the student experience and requirements for Vanderbilt University. Um, if you do have any more questions about studying in America, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, please visit educationusa.state.gov or feel free to email us directly at educationusanz.state.gov. And we're happy
happy to help out with, with any of your questions. Um, thanks again for joining us.